Hi, I'm Christy Morrow Cohen. I am a performer and a co-director of MGM in Concert. I'm giving an interview, and I would love for you to come and listen to the interview if you want to hear more about this fabulous show. Well, I was raised by a musical theater father uh, from the time I came out of the womb. And we did shows together from the time I was little. And he had me watching late at night because there was no VHS tapes or anything, no streaming devices. Whenever they came on television, the old MGM musicals, and I became obsessed with wanting to sing and dance and look at the acting and the, the costumes and everything so beautiful that I, I just became obsessed with it and I knew I had to be a part of it. So I ventured out in school where you start, you know, you get in the theater department, the drama department, and I, I just started acting in every show I could act in, in school through the years. And then I went to some professional auditions and did very well. And I ended up getting to play some of the roles that I dreamed about doing when I was little from all the stuff my father showed me and taught me. My father used to write shows for a high school. And I remember I was very young. I was probably 11 or 12 years old. And that was the, f the first time in a show. I was on stage before that with him doing little cabaret kind of stuff. But that was the first time I was in a show. And I played um, Annie. It was a show about a bunch of different Broadway musicals intertwining. And I played Annie. And I stepped out on that stage and the audience and the energy it gave me. And I just knew I needed more of this. I wanted more of this. And I loved it so much. And that's what it was in the beginning. But as I continued doing it, then it became more about delving into these characters and feeling what, what, what the character was supposed to feel. And that felt good, too. And then I couldn't stop. Then I was, <laughs> every audition, every, I was just, I had to get on stage and I had to be in a part, a role. It just felt normal, natural, and just like eating, you know, eating, exercising, playing, going through. It was part of my life. It, it, there was no other, I've been lucky to never have done something else but this. So I, yeah, I, it's part of me. <laughs> Why is it such a unique experience? Well, having been an audience member and having been on the stage, I kind of answered the question of on the stage. I get to experience another life, another character, separate from the way I am, which is just, it's incredible. It's a wonderful gift to do that. But also seeing it, the same kind of thing, almost when you read a book and you delve into these characters, uh, it, you get to see somebody becomes, you get to go on their journey with them. And the better they do it, the more it just fills you. I, I saw um, Les Mis, the original version, when I was very young on Broadway. And just to answer your question about an audience member, as a young girl seeing that for the first time, in the, I was fourth row center, I was moved to tears. I was just sobbing. So it was in a happy way, in an emotional way. It can, it can take you on a journey. It can also, you know, relieve you from the ills of life. If you go to something happy, it, it will change you. You cannot stay angry and listen to a happy, happy tune or a happy character doing something funny and enjoyable. So I do prefer theater over film for that reason. The joy of the not knowing, not getting the retake, and all the crazy things that can happen and how you learn to come together as a cast and deal with those things. Oh, I have had some crazy things happen to me on stage. <laughs> I have walked out as Lori in Oklahoma, said my first line, and my skirt fell to the floor. <laughs> and, and these are all uh, equity productions, professional, it can happen. It's not necessarily, they always say, oh, that's community theater. No, it happens on Broadway. Sound going out completely and having to come up with a song and learn to do your Ethel Merman projection, you know, on how do you deal with things? And that's so fun. How can you get out of these little things and make them work? And the audience, on the audience's side, because you asked me that, they feel for you, they almost, 
open their hearts more to you when they see that you're, oh, she is actually a human giving us this production. We're not watching a, a screen. We're watching a live person. And you react from that too, and you're in it together. So it's very cool. They're more unique to me, I'd say. I mean, there are people who would not enjoy musicals. But I like my same answer would be, I think music in general can change bad to good. And it, it, it just, it, it can bring back memories. Um, it can help you think clearly if you're not thinking clearly. It opens your mind. Music is so important for humanity. And I think going to a musical, whether it's, no matter what the subject, if it's sad or happy or whatever, you still leave there. Um, humming the tune in your head or or moved in some dramatic way. It moves things just for me in a better way than a, a play would. I enjoy that break that and I feel that music sets more emotion behind your feelings. Yeah, so I enjoy it very much. Before P3 ever existed, my dear friend John Peterson that we met back in the early 90s doing theater together. And he, he's younger than me. He loves to say that too. He's younger than me. And he, he was just a chorus boy dancing sweetly in the, in, the, in the chorus of a show I was in. And we just hit it off and became very close. We share the same birthday. And He's such an emotional and wonderful human being who really cares about the actors. He's not in it just for the business. He just loves it. He'll give all he has to make sure that show goes on. A lot of theaters aren't into, they're into the financial, and, and there's something to be said for that. You have to keep it going, you have to be, but he'll go even to the fault of that because he cares so much about performing. So that's, he is P3 that man, and you get that from him. So you want to give your all. You want to be there past what's asked of you because you, you fall in love with the man who loves you back just as much because he loves actors and singers and performers so much. And he does his best to make sure it's going to get heard, it's going to get seen. It's, so it is a very unique theater in that respect. And he's hands on, he's there all the time and he is, the head, which you usually don't get to see. You see the director he hired, you see the choreographer he hired, but no, you see John Peterson all the time, and he's wonderful, and his theater's wonderful, and I just hope it keeps going on and on and on. And I think it means you're going to see pieces that mean something to him, and actors he hired that believe in the project just as much. He does unique projects. Um, the Doris Stay show, the MGM show, they all are very unique pieces, but they're also very personal to the writers. And he knows this, he feels this, and he wants to share what he feels, what he's getting from the pieces to his audiences. And sometimes they won't even be the most popular thing, most popular choice to put on, but he feels it. So again, his cast feels it, and then the audience feels it. It started back on the other coast. My father uh, writes a lot of shows. He wrote Doris, the Doris Day Show. Um, but back then he was writing a lot of reviews. And one of the most successful was the MGM one. They have a condominium circuit there. Gorgeous theaters, thousand seat theaters with balconies, theaters that are right out of Broadway. And you can work that you used to be able to. I don't know how it's going on now, but back then. And I would say we are going now into 1986, 87. Uh, it was hot. The, the market was hot. You, would, you could do 16 shows in one month, and it was wonderful houses. Um, but the MGM show, I, would, I was very young, fresh out of high school, and we started doing that version with a, whole, a different cast, clearly, <laughs> um, in these condos. And it became very popular, it kept running, and then I moved out to LA separate. So we put a stop on it. 
and John, um, I came out here to do a Vita where I told you I met John from P3, head of P3. He and I became friends, and when we were done here in LA and wanted to go back to Florida, I talked him into coming with me and being my roommate and said, you have to meet my father and you have to work with him. It'll be a very unique experience for you. You're going to love it. And it happened to be the MGM show that he wanted to remount. And so with a very young John Peterson, he, we started again. And a very uh, pregnant me, we started again <laughs> at that time. And, and again, success all over again there. And we did it for as long as we could until John wanted to go somewhere else and I wanted to go somewhere else. It, it, my dad would have kept doing it. It was successful and could have still been running today, I'm even thinking, there. But we, we, we still had to grow. We were younger, so we still went to different places. And um, then meeting John here, he called me. I, have a, I put together a uh, company. Um, I want to do a show. I want you to star in it. And I was like, oh, oh my god, yes, of course. And after we finished that show, John said, you know, one of my greatest experiences and my learning experience, my greatest learning experience was doing shows with your dad, that MGM show, really changed me, really opened me up, made me see some, how, how to handle different things in this business. He said, could we do that here? And I said, absolutely, that would be great, John, oh my gosh. And we called my dad who was living in Florida and he moved out here and we mounted MGM again. We started doing that again. And then of course, time, different projects, different things. I believe John left town for a little bit to go do something, uh, left the country to go do something, but he came right back. And again, he says, let's do MGM in concert. But now my dad was aging. Um, I was actually the age of my dad when he was doing it back then. And so he needed to pass the hat. And we found Chris Showerman. Nobody could do, the, do it better than Chris Showerman. He is, he's just got it in, in his soul. He knows how to do the magic that my dad did when he performed. And he's just a joy to work with. And we're back again. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're doing it again. It's a show that I think is just going to live and live and live on forever. What it is. Well, it's just an honor an honorary tribute to the old MGM musicals and Broadway shows produced by MGM. Some of the best music, the best stars that existed, and that time was just magical. That same feeling some people have when they go to Disney World, the purity, the, it's, it's just like we're in a magical place, nothing can harm us or hurt us here in this world. Well, that same feeling is in this MGM concert, is, is hearing this music and talking about these old artists, Fred Astaire, Gene Kelly, Judy Garland, it's endless. Th that was a time where we felt safe. We felt safe. You would lose yourself in that beautiful, imaginary, wonderful world, magical world, I would say. Yeah, so that's why. Makes you feel good. Why does the audience? Yep, exactly what I said. It's an escape from reality. You go to a magical place, no matter what the subject matter is. And you, you get to release, especially nowadays, people are under a lot of stress, a lot of, you know, and it gets rid of all your woes and ills. You just lose yourself in that magical world. It's a fan favorite because it just makes you feel so good and safe and you just enjoy that wonderful time you have. And you'll, you'll end up walking out wanting to be nice to other people, wanting to do good things. It puts you in a really good place in life. What do I look for? Honestly, I want smiley faces actually responding to me <laughs> because that elevates an actor's performance, whether the actor knows it or not. It just happens. It, it's, a, it, it's not voluntary, the response. You see people enjoying themselves and having a good time, and you get elevated. Your endorphins start going up, 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 and you, then you don't know what's going to happen, and I love that that feeling of going, yes, we have the structured project, but how, where can I take this? 
with the audience just a little bit more, you know, it's, it's fun that way, yeah. That's what I would look for, how the audience is going to respond to make the performance have a different way to it, in a sense. For John, I would say it's over the rainbow. He loves when I sing over the rainbow. I like the fun moments. I like uh, Annie Get Your Gun uh, when we're, argue, we're doing the argue, arguing song. I can do something better than you, you know. I like that kind of stuff. And um, I, like, I love the choreography. I love doing um, steps in unison. That feeling of when we all three come together really fills me up. When we're all doing something and you get that extra energy and you're all in it together, yeah. You can get more in, and I think you don't want it to go longer than 90 minutes because it, it's a ride you take, and I, and I wouldn't want, everybody gets tired after some time, and you're enjoying and enjoying, and you're lifting, and you're lifting, and you're lifting, and I think it's just perfectly comes to that ending where you've, you've been lifted to that ultimate excitement, and now you can relax and go, and it's wonderful. If you take it to where you've lifted in that energy so high, and then you keep going, even though it's good, it doesn't even matter if it's the greatest thing you've ever seen, I think it would be too long. So I, I think the length for the cabaret shows is perfect at 90 minutes, and I love doing shorter versions of the songs because you can put more of the beautiful material in there, the wonderful material. Um, different with a musical script, a show. Like I could sit in Les Mis, you know, it's three hours long, I love that. Um, that's different because you're, you're with a character. You're, it's like reading a book. Um, so yeah, that's why I, I think it's perfect the way it is. John and I go way back. We have the same birthday. Um, we are just dear friends, dear friends. I love him so much. He's a wonderful, wonderful person. His family is wonderful. He comes from a very good family. That is why he's such a wonderful person. I truly believe that. And um, we just both have the same goals. We, we want to just give and give and give to the theater world in any way we can. We like to perform, we like to put on shows, we like to direct shows, choreograph shows, and we, so we're on the same page with that, very much so. And um, I hope to continue, I hope to know him all the way on this whole ride, you know. Just never not know who he is as a person, I always wanna be in his life. Um, and Chris Showerman is, I, I, this is the first show I've actually, had the experience of working with Chris Showerman, but he comes in like a light. He's just a, a, a wonderful, wonderful person, highly talented, and just super sweet, super sweet. What you're seeing when you meet him, that's him. He's not faking it, he doesn't change who he is. He's just a wonderful, wonderful person, big, big time talent, and he reminds me of my dad when he was young um, because he's willing to take chances. He does crazy things, just like my dad, goes in the audience, messes with the people, great ad-libber. Um, and I look forward to continuing shows with him. He's very, it's just very fun to work with, very nice man. I just think, um, again, to feel good, but the actual performers who come to see it can learn how to sometimes break that third wall and, and meet your audience and work with them and, and see how sometimes it doesn't have to be so perfect as long as you're giving 100% of your heart when you're up there. I think you can learn a lot from it and then take that with you, like John said he did, and I did. I certainly learned a lot doing those kind of things. I'm much more adaptable to situations in this theater world that might ha cause somebody to have a nervous breakdown. I can handle it. I, I you know, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I can't go on. I, uh, those things were wiped away doing this kind of a show because you learn, why are we doing this? We're doing this because we love it and it's fun. And this show reminds you of that. You're dealing with a very unconventional um, theater company because John is coming first from the love of the project, 
rather than the business and the earning of the money. Of course, he wants to make money. We all work and need money. But his first approach to it is, that sounds fantastic. We're going to do what it takes to get it on. We're going to get the right people to do it. And we're going to get it right. And we're going to come with our hearts with the project. And the audience will see that, because you can't not see that. And your project will, your project will be loved. So it's a great place to come for that reason. Just come see it and have a great, great time with us because we're having a great time up there. And remember, you know, what it used to be like, what's brought it to what's today. And, and yeah, sometimes it's great to look into the past to enjoy the future a little bit more. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christy Morrow Cohen. I am the performer and co-director of MGM in Concert, which is now being produced and put on by the P3 Theater Company uh, and John Peterson. And we are doing this fabulous MGM show, just a throwback to the wonderful, pure, magical, safe time great music, um, and we love what we're doing, and we know you will love what you're doing, so come on out and see our show. See you in the theater! <laughs>
For more information on where to find MGM in concert or to book MGM in concert for a private event, make sure to visit our website at www.p3theater.biz.